Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use the dome light in V-Ray and SketchUp. I'm gonna show you all the settings within it. I'm gonna show you also how we can quickly change the lighting environment using HDRIs from the Chaos Cosmos library and how we apply those to our dome light to produce different render results. My name's Jake, I'm a freelance designer and I've used SketchUp and V-Ray for a number of years. Um, I've worked on uh, multiple different projects including interior design, garden design, commercial design um, and also product design. So I hope you find this video useful. Let's jump directly into SketchUp now and begin working with the dome light in V-Ray. Okay, so I've just opened up SketchUp and I've opened up a scene that I was working on with a client. Uh, this is a garden design that we've been working on and I think it looks really cool, it's a really cool garden. Uh, but basically, initially what I'm going to show you is what happens when you render an image without using a dome light. So this is basically what V-Ray automatically puts as the background. So I'm just going to run a render and show you what that looks like now. So as you can see, we've basically just got a, a blue gradient to grey in the background and this is just a standard V-Ray um, SketchUp backgrounds that will be in your renders when you just click render. Um, so it's not that exciting, it's not using too much um, lighting from that environment, it's using a fair amount but it's actually mainly using the sunlight. So what the dome light will do, you'll actually get lighting coming from the HDRI which will affect your model and yeah all of the lighting within it. So that's kind of what it looks like um, with nothing and now I'm going to show you how to actually import a dome light. So to create our dome light what you can do is you can come up to the button on the top that says dome light and now if you don't have this toolbar up what you can do instead is go to extensions V-Ray and then V-Ray lights and you should see dome lights you can just click on that as well and it will do the same thing. So once I've clicked on that I'm just going to place my dome light it doesn't really matter where you put it just make sure it's on the flat plane so I tend to put it on the floor of my model um, so I wouldn't put it on the roof I don't think it makes any difference but just to be safe I just put it on the floor. So that is our dome light it's this kind of weird um, line structure with an arrow on it and that is the direction in which the sun goes. Um, yeah, so now if we look at our asset editor within V-Ray, you can see our dome lights showing up under lights. So if I just go into my light section, you can see our dome lights. And now when I run a render, I'll show you what has happened to the render and I'll show you the changes. So I'll just run another one of those quickly and show you the difference. So before we had that kind of gradient from gray to blue, now we have an actual image and it's showing it on the horizon because that's where the horizon is on our our model so that's why it kind of looks like it's almost floating but this is an actual image and the lighting technically should be affecting our model slightly but i think at the moment our sunlight is still overriding that so it may not be so but that is essentially a dome light it allows us to put uh, an image um, around the the model and it projects that light from the image onto our model so i'll close that and we can dig into the settings of the dome light and i'll show you how to adjust and manipulate it so in our lights tab of the V-Ray asset editor, I can highlight my dome light and then click this outer arrow and this will show our settings for our dome light. Now at the moment I still had the original sunlight on, so what that meant is when I rendered it, it actually basically got the um, stock kind of V-Ray sunlight, which is actually very good actually, I do recommend using this one. Um, so it was, it was using that along with the dome light, so it wasn't truly showing the dome light's functionality. Um, so what you can do to really use the dome light is you can turn off the sunlight, run a render, and you'll probably see that it's quite dark, so you'd want to um, up the intensity of that dome light so it really infects your environment. Um, as, as you like it. So within the settings, we can see the basic settings here. Um, essentially what a dome light is, it is projecting that image uh, in a sphere kind of type manner and that light is uh, reflecting onto your model. The image that does that is this little image here and it's the texture slot. Um, and you can see this image is kind of washed out at the moment, but that is actually a sky image. Uh, obviously there's no ground attached to that also. And that is located in a file. Um, you can see the extension there and how to get to that area. You've got the, your classic uh, V-Ray settings here. You can you know, invert and adjust the um, image itself and the placement. Um, I don't tend to you know, use this too much because I think the standard HDRIs um, that I'll show you coming up in the Chaos Cosmos are fine. There's no point manipulating them too much. 
Um, but the, the thing I do use a lot is the Use Transform tool. So this is gonna be, instead of using your, your classic shadows um, within SketchUp, so I'm sure you know about the shadows, how you can adjust them using uh, these toggles. When using the dome lights, uh, these toggles won't actually affect that. You would have to manually uh, change the direction of your dome light. So I'm gonna just turn that shadow off. What I mean by that is that if you tick this use transform tool, you'll see that we can now basically position the sun where we want it. So at the moment, the arrow determines which way the sun is uh, pointing. So it's pointing to the left here. So if I now um, move this and rotate it, the sun will now point pretty much in the opposite direction. But that's only the case if you have um, use transform turned on. So I'm just gonna up the intensity a bit so we can just make the shadows obvious and then I'm gonna run a render and you can, you'll can you see the difference um, when I move, uh, now I've moved the actual dome light itself. So that render's just finished and you can see the sun is kind of shining um, left. So essentially that arrow tells you where the sun is. So um, I might have misspoke in the uh, previous segment. It's actually the arrow dictates where the sun is. So the arrow was pointing um, away from the house. Uh, now the render shows the sun coming in uh, to the left and pointing to this uh, rear area here. Um, but that is an example of how to use the transform uh, with the dome light. Again, wherever you rotate the dome light, the sun will move to that position. So the arrow dictates where the sun is. Uh, that is an important factor and that is only once you have the use transform um, toggle turned on. If at any point you're kind of struggling to understand a setting, if you just highlight your mouse over um, a setting within V-Ray, it normally gives you a pretty good idea of what it does. Sometimes I use quite a lot of technical jargon that might not make sense, but overall it's pretty good. So if I highlight over the use transform, you can see you know, it says basically the VRAM dome viewport widget allows them to rotate together in the scene. So essentially that means you're gonna turn the whole HDRI. So that whole image that's producing light onto your model is getting rotated when you rotate the dome light. Um, so hopefully that is clear. So now I'm gonna show you how we can use the Chaos Cosmos library to quickly change our HDRI and change the whole environment and look of our renders. But the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the Chaos Cosmos uh, tab and then I'm gonna come down to a HDRIs. Now in here, there's tons of little studio ones, which I definitely recommend for product renders. And I might show you further along in this video, uh, an example of that, of how I use studio lights. Uh, so that's a really quick way to create essentially a studio lighting setup without making individual lights. You can just use one of these HDRIs and it works really well. So when you scroll through the library, you'll see there's a bunch of different HDRIs. Um, some of them are better than others. Uh, some are like brighter, some are darker, um, but there's a ton and they are all really good. They're really high quality HDRIs. Um, I know you can buy, uh, sorry, I know you can download HDRIs on the internet from other websites and I'm sure there's plenty out there. Um, and again, it's a pretty simple process of using that file. Um, the file location, you basically just upload your HDRI and then that will project it onto your dome light. Um, so, but for this example, I'm gonna show you a uh, how you download and use one of these because um, it's actually not that clear using V-Ray. Uh, so here's how you do it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna download day 17 into my model. So I'm gonna click download and it's just gonna quickly download and it's asset downloaded successfully. Um, if you click on this, it will import it into your model. Now this is where it gets a bit confusing and why V-Ray, uh, I don't know, for some reason didn't make it that clear on how to use it. You might think that, oh, I've just imported it, so now it's gonna work, but that is actually not the case. So we can just close the browser and you can see our dome light is still the same. We still got the same uh, image. And what I used to do is I would manually change the texture. So when you download that, uh, HDRI that I just downloaded from the Chaos Cosmos. It will actually be on your computer, but it's kind of a bit of a tricky way to do it. But what you'll see, if you go to your textures, you'll see that Day17 has downloaded as a texture uh, under this tab here. Um, here's your original sky and this is this texture. Now, if I press Control on my keyboard and click on the lighting, you'll see that I can now have both tabs open at the same time. So now to apply that HDRI that we just downloaded, what we need to do is we need to right click on the one that we wanna use, so day 17, and we're gonna click copy. And now we're gonna go into our dome light, and then 
in the little texture slot, we're gonna right click and then we're gonna click paste as instance. And you should see the kind of dome light change, the preview change. And because it's quite high intensity, you get the classic um, issue of it. Kind of looks a bit washed out here, but when you render, render it, you'll see that it actually comes in. So I'm just gonna run a render now and you'll see the difference in how quickly we changed our environment. So as you can see, the render's just finished and the lighting has changed. We have a different kind of image in the top section. So this section is now that sky um, from day 17 that we wanted. Also the lighting has changed. We can see we kind of got harder shadows um, and the direction of the HDRI is kind of different to how we had it before. So that's basically how to change the the HDRI on your dome light. Now, I think this could be a bit brighter, so let's adjust the settings and run another render. So I'm just gonna close that. So the intensity is at 0.6. Let's put it to like, maybe about, about one. Um, the issue you may have is when you up the intensity, the actual image itself in the sky may, may become a bit washed out. Um, I'm not really found a workaround for that, but uh, if you do, please let me know in the comments because I'd like to know how to change that. Also, let's change the direction of the sun. So the sun's here at the moment. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it over there. So hopefully that means the shadows should um, kind of come more in this direction. So the, the right hand direction. Although this this HDRI is kind of like a midday HDRI. So the sun seems to be kind of quite central. So it may not have that much of an effect. So we've upped the intensity, we've kept everything else the same. There's nothing else I would change. I'll run another render and we'll see the difference there just by applying those uh, quick changes. So that render's just finished and you can see, yeah, the direction of the sun did change a bit. Our shadows are now coming in this direction. So yeah, so I think that works out. Basically the arrow either points where the sun is or where the shadows are going. I think it's different for each HDRI. You spin around your HDRI, you'll you'll notice which is which. Um, I like the brightness as well, so everything's a bit more uh, exposed. This might be a bit, the exposure may be a little bit too high, um, but you could actually adjust that here just by adding an exposure tab. We can just turn it down a little bit. Um, we can just reduce the highlight burn as well. So that brings out the texture and the paving a little bit better. Um, yeah, so we rotated it, we have upped the intensity, and that's how to make little tweaks to the HDRI. You also notice that the, the actual map has rotated fully, so as we rotate the dome lights, the image itself will rotate as well. So if you wanted to line up with a particular um, image or, or, or uh, area of the HDRI, you could do that manually by rotating the uh, dome light. So these are really good for outdoor environments and the Chaos Cosmos has so many of these um, HDRIs. So let me just download another one just to show you another example. So let's go for something a bit more moody. So there's like kind of a sunset one here, sunset 20. I'm gonna download that now and show you the results of that. Again, I'm just gonna import it straight into my model. Uh, it's appeared here, sunset 20. Um, it doesn't really show us much in that image, but what we can do is we just copy it, go into our dome light, uh, right click and then do paste as instance and you'll see the texture change now if we run a render we'll see the changes and the complete change to the environment so using that sunset hdri we've achieved this result i think it looks really cool obviously we don't have a floor but to change that floor you'd use uh, infinite plane using re-ray that'll probably be in a separate video i'll probably do a video on infinite planes um, but you can see the sunset looks really cool. Um, obviously it's quite dark here now, so you'd probably want to put lighting in this environment, some actual like spotlights and panel lights to create a really nice outdoor kind of nighttime scene for your garden renders. Um, but yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of the different effects you can achieve really quickly using HDRIs uh, from the Chaos Cosmos. Using these is great if you want to create different environments for settings. So ideal for gardens, if you wanted to see a garden, um, see how it looked between night and day, using HDRIs is going to be a really quick way to do that. Uh, and it can produce some really cool results. Ideally, you wouldn't see this floor. So, you know, this, this environment texture will probably be better up by a wall. So you kind of just see a bit of it um, poking out. I might run a quick render um, to show you what that should look like. Uh, but other than that, I think that's a pretty clear way how to use the um, dome lights. So now I'm gonna jump into a more product-like situation. So if you were 
creating renders for a product like a chair or a desk or you know anything that you may have designed um, how you can use the dome lights in those settings and the advantages of using dome lights uh, when rendering those types of scenes so here is an example of somewhere where you may use a dome light to create some studio lighting so this is going to be in that uh, product or furniture type arena of SketchUp. Um, what I've done is I've actually created an infinity wall uh, so that's basically going to leave us with no hard edge on the background um, and what I've done at the moment is I've actually turned all the lights off so there's actually no lights so when you run a render you just get this kind of black image uh, so I'm going to quickly uh, put in a dome light and apply a HDR and you'll see the results so first I'm going to click my dome light place my dome light there I'm going to go back into the Chaos Cosmos and find a HDRI. So these are the Studio HDRIs. Again, these are all pretty good, actually. They are um, a very quick way to create studio lighting. Uh, so I'm going to just grab, let's go for uh, this one, Studio 2. I'm going to download that, import it into my model. And now if I go into my Textures tab, you'll see Studio 2 is imported. This is uh, another one, Studio 7, but we're going to use Studio 2. So if I click control on my keyboard and I open up both of them, so I'm gonna right click Studio 2, click copy. And then I'm gonna go into my dome light. It's just a stock bog standard dome light. And then I'm gonna click right click and then paste this instance. And you'll see the whole environment has changed. I, I, I think the intensity is probably gonna be a bit too low, but I'll run a render and I'll see. Um, and we can make adjustments from there. I'm gonna set up my camera in a position that I think looks good. Okay, let's run a render and see what it looks like. So as I thought, I just run a render and it is too dark, so I'm gonna have to up the intensity. So let's put it to, let's try five. Um, again, that might be two. And uh, let's try a bit more, let's do eight. And then I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Um, I'm gonna tick the use transform if I do wanna use that at any point, but I'm just gonna leave it in that direction and I'll run another render and see what it looks like. Let me just position my chair and run a render now. So that render's just finished and I actually, it was still a bit dark, but I just added a, an exposure correction um, using this little plus uh, create layer area and I just up the exposure. And you can see it does look uh, pretty good now. And we get these like really nice shadows. Um, again, you can just, you can rotate the environment using the uh, dome light. You can actually rotate that thingy and it will change the lighting direction. Um, but that is a really quick way to create studio lighting in V-Ray and SketchUp. So perfect for any product renders, uh, furniture renders, anything like that. This is the way to go when using the dome light. So hopefully that has cleared everything up for you um, regarding the dome light and it makes sense. If you'd really like to improve your skills in SketchUp and V-Ray, I've got some amazing courses over on Skillshare. Um, now I highly recommend you check out the garden design ones. So if you wanna get good at designing uh, exterior spaces like gardens, also I have a load of uh, interior design videos over there. If you wanna improve your renders, I have V-Ray lessons. So classes on how to create really cool V-Ray visuals. Along with that, I also have a dedicated product renders class. So if you wanna get better at creating studio lighting for your renders, um, this is great if you're designing concepts or wanted to get uh, furniture manufactured but want some good visuals to show clients, um, this is a great class for that. It will really help you out. I'll link that below. Also, if you use any of my links below, you will get one month free um, when you're using Skillshare. So you'll be able to use those classes and you'll get one month free. It's a pretty good deal and it also really helps me out. So I appreciate if you check that out. Other than that, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it helped you. Uh, I'm still getting used to YouTube and I'm still growing on YouTube. So any questions in the comments, please let me know anything regarding V-Ray or SketchUp and I'll be sure to answer them. Um, if you subscribe to my channel, I'm hoping to put out videos pretty consistently. So if you're into this kind of area of design, whether it be 3D modeling, SketchUp, V-Ray, um, all that kind of thing, I should have a load of content for you. Yeah, if you wanna subscribe, please do. Um, other than that guys, I hope you have a good day and I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.